Okay, so here we are with another project. This one took me most of a year since I'm doing it for my first time. And I wanted to make a werewolf uh, muscle suit. In order to build it to fit me, I had to make myself a homemade mannequin uh, shaped to my body. In order to get the mold for that, I wrapped myself in saran wrap and then added about four layers of masking tape to create a mostly strong structure that conforms to my body. The saran wrap keeps the tape from sticking to my clothing, while the crisscross and multiple layers of tape add the structural integrity. I did this for my torso, for my arms, and then for my lower half. Before you cast it with foam, you should remove the plastic wrap inside, at least as much as possible. A little bit won't bother the foam very much, but a lot of loose saran wrap can have some flaking going on on the exterior. For foam, I decided to test it with some old cans of great stuff which is self-rising insulation foam. As you can see, I underestimated how much it would inflate just a little bit and testing it out on one arm first I found that the interior of the mold remained very tacky and so I had to peel it off little by little and every time I'd peel back some it would start inflating a little bit so it created this rather deformed mess however using a foam sander I was able to form it and trim it down and shape it when I experimented with the second arm I found that moisture causes the foam to harden and catalyze as I would spray a little bit of the foam, I would then spray in some water, and then more foam, a little bit of water, like a mister, and just slowly work out, and I didn't have as much problems with it deforming and having lumps and cysts. I did the same with the legs and the torso. In order to not use as much foam, I did experiment with packing the interior with some old upholstery foam I had left over. I did find that mixing foams this way especially if the interior foam is near the edge, makes for some difficulty while sanding. Now, since this mannequin both needs to fit together, as well as hold a costume that I will then be poking needles into and sewing through, I need a hard exterior coat to keep from sewing into the foam or taking out chunks of the foam or anything like that. I used a clay putty to both make the joints, which are connected with a block of wood as well as that exterior shell. I do not advise that as when the clay dries or if the foam heats up it causes expanding that cracks the clay. Thankfully all the pieces fit together nicely to create a smooth layer that keeps from snagging the spandex costume. I had to sand down the water plaster layer to create that smooth surface. With the exterior finished I added a protective layer of paint to help keep from any of the clay paste from flaking off and used a board with wheels and some PVC pipe to create the stand so I can wheel it around, spin it, and it'll stay upright. Then came the time to put on the first layer of the suit. In order to save some hassle with stretching out spandex, I did purchase a couple morph suit. With the suit on, I was then able to take some tape, put it on the suit, lay it over where I want the muscles and skeletal structures to be, trace it, take the tape off and the sheet, lay it on some newspaper, and then cut out the tracing from the newspaper, giving me the shapes of the muscles to use as stencil. I only had to do this for one half the body as the muscles are mirrored and you can just flip the stencil over. Then I'd take these newspaper tape meshes to trace the stencil out on the different foam which then allows me to cut them out. I definitely advise labeling them so that you keep track of which muscles go where on which side of the body and it never hurts to do your best to save as much material as you can by using the space properly. For the ribs and many of the bones, I use a harder foam, which is used for flooring tile, usually for kids' rooms or similar projects. For these ribs, I use three layers, and the key is to glue them while folded and bent. That way, the glue, as it dries, will hold that form, otherwise, it will want to spring back out. I use a mixture of different foams for different muscles, from some soft fabric foam to create a 
soft cushion for joints, upholstery foam for shape, the hard tile foam for bone, as well as some plastic foam, which acts as a lighter version of the upholstery foam, mostly just for shape. While trimming the muscles and bones, it is important to lay them on the body, or the, the mannequin, and make sure that you're getting the proportions and structures that you want. Those in place to attach them to the first layer of spandex, you then measure and wrap each of the foam pieces, just like making a little sock or pouch. I would use pins to hold the spandex on as I get the tight form around it. You definitely want a tight form to help the details of your carving come through, and then sew it together to make the sock. When you sew, you leave an edge, and so when you, you leave a little bit of an opening so you can flip the sock inside out and then hand sew the end so that the seam is not affecting the shape of the muscle and its appearance. With all the muscles made, and then use safety pins to attach them onto the suit to make sure I like where they are and then to test the functionality. Got my muscle suit going. Uh, hasn't this uh, doesn't have skin on it yet. It's just the muscles on top of the um, morph body suit. But I'm liking how they're looking so far. A nice, nice muscle going on there. Shoulders are working fine. Pecs. Got some unraveling going on here I need to fix. Otherwise, it's going pretty good. The rib cage is sliding over the abs and stomach really well. It's the back looking, shoulders. Got plenty of flexibility and movement. Got the muscles there. Even got a little kneecap going on. Move. Uh, I think with the fixing of this unraveling going on here, maybe tack the pecs down a little bit. I think it should work. I used uh, four different types of foam for these muscles. Um, Let's see, you start off with add kind of a soft fabric foam for uh, like the bicep and these muscles so that they're soft and not rigid when I'm moving my arms. Since for the werewolf character, there's going to be a lot of crawling and arm bending. Um, same thing with the pecs. I didn't want uh, something really poking into me here. So these are kind of a softer foam. Then I had some kind of a, a plastic foam just hanging around, so I decided to use that for uh, some of these abs. Uh, pretty much the same as uh, the upholstery foam that I use for most of the muscles, like all the back muscles here, and the shoulders, and most of the muscles. It's uh, the same foam that is used for like chair seats and uh, couches, that kind of foam. And then uh, lastly, there is the rigid, uh, I've heard it called a UVA foam. Uh, a lot of uh, cosplayers and that kind of people use that kind of foam. I use a uh, flooring UVA foam that uh, you can buy pretty much instead of like carpet or tile. And it's kind of shaped like a, a puzzle piece. So I had to kind of shave some of the ridges down but I was able to make my ribs out of that so it's nice solid form same with the hips here and my knees uh, but yeah so the four different kinds of foam they seem to work well after uh, mapping out the muscles I wanted 
I had to uh, shave them and cut them to you know, the right shapes and everything and then sleeve them in spandex. That not only helps keep the foam dust from getting all over inside the suit, but also gives you something to sew the muscles uh, onto the uh, bodysuit layer with. Again, like I said, I use a morph suit. I had to cut off the head, hands, and feet, but it's already a nice tight fit, so I didn't have to you know, map out an entire suit with spandex. It's a nice shortcut. And yeah, next step is fixing this and the skinning, putting a skin layer so you're not seeing all these straps like for the muscle, uh, for the shoulders. And make it look more organic, like uh, like essentially a skin, uh, skin being pulled over the muscles as the muscles move. But yeah, it's coming along fine. Big old werewolf guy. <sighs> a little bit of a lower vid to see the legs and everything more easy and see just how well I can punch down these uh, back to the thigh muscle and the calves kind of work as a little seat I can sit on so when I'm hunched over I'll have a little rest and support going on. Once I got the skin layer on visually it looks a little disappointing when it's hanging up especially with trying to make sure that the seams go well along the back with the zipper but once it's being worn it looks pretty good. All right so the muscle suit is done. I got the skin layer on and it makes the muscles blend in more and let's the movement go over got plenty of movement for running and hunching over or just you know walking which is probably the main thing I'll be doing. I still like the support of this rib cage, and hopefully it's noticeable and comes through. Notice that the abs still come through nicely. Yeah, anyway, I like it. Now for the werewolf appliances, I want to make hands that have fingers that are about one third longer than my actual fingers. So I created these contraptions using wires and tensions wrapped around the wrist to add that extra length. The back of where the wires attach, I glued on some upholstery foam and wrapped that in the spandex sleeve so I have a nice soft pad on the back of my hand instead of something hard like the raw wood that it's made from. As you can see, the wire attaches from the farthest metacarpal and wraps over with zip ties to where it attaches on the back of the hand. The zip ties help keep the tension from pulling away from the finger. I then made spandex gloves that will go over this contraption to keep it from snagging on the faux fur hair of the hands and I had to essentially make a second glove for each hand that has the fur. Again I used the method of sewing it inside out and then having to roll it so that the seams are on the inside. As for the fingertips I made a plaster mold of my thumbs and then uh, poured in some latex. So they're little latex thumbs and for the nails I took some twigs from a tree in my yard, uh, cut them to the length I wanted, split them in half, and then Dremel sanded them to give them the, the points. And those claws I then glued onto the latex fingers, giving it the kind of werewolf claw feel. I also trimmed down the faux fur around the fingers, but still wanting to keep the length on the wrist and forearm. For the palm, I also made a mold of my own palms and used a technique that is basically latex cotton, except that I had the initial layer of latex and then added in a layer of dryer sheet, more latex than dryer sheet making a sandwich that way which allows me to make thinner latex that's also stronger and more durable especially for sewing because the edge of the latex is sewn to the fur. For the tail I made a belt 
buckle or belt loop from popsicle sticks and use some screws to attach some bottle caps that also allow for a very long zip tie to extend out the back. Now this zip tie has eye screws screwed in at various lengths making it so that the wires strung through them will pull back and forth making the tail wag as I walk. And of course sewing the faux fur inside out, rolling it inside of itself so that the fur is on the outside and string it along the wireframe of the tail. And with this belt it then pokes out a hole at the bottom of my zipper on the muscle suit so that the tail and the wires and everything can be underneath the suit. For the feet, I wanted to have platform shoes or more like stilts. So I took an old pair of tennis shoes, uh, pulled out the insole, and nailed it down, and then reinserted the insole. So it's on these wind boards. I had the same plastic tubing as I used for the fingers uh, on the back to act like a dog's or wolf's tendon, and wanted to add some PVC pipe with foam in the middle for some extra length and height. I also made a spandex sleep for this to not only cover it but also add some of that protection for the removable fur layer so I can also use these stilts for other costumes or projects and I have an eye screw near the tendon which allows the wires for the tail to attach so that each step I take it tightens that wire and pulls the tail making it wet. For the fur feet, in order to even add some more length, I added four wolf toes, which I made from styrofoam after the same method as the muscles of the suit, wrapping it in spandex and then sewing that spandex onto the faux fur. For the claws themselves, I had sculpted the claw out of clay and then made a plaster mold of that and cast latex from it. I then packed the claws with cotton so that they're not as flimsy and they're more bouncy. Because the toes are not attached to the actual foot, it also allows them to kind of flop up and down as I walk, giving it a more realistic toe. I found that I did not have enough time to make the entire suit from fur before Halloween, so I improvised with a very large button-up shirt and very large pair of pants, having to use suspenders to hold them up, and I also didn't have time to make the animatronic werewolf head that I wanted, so I just improvised a werewolf mask strapped onto my head like a hat. The size extension of the hands seems to work fine, and the tail pokes out appropriately, and even my feet are able to walk around. I did find that uh, getting traction on tile is not easily done with the PVC pipes, so I took another pair of old shoes, cut off the soles, and then attached the soles onto the bottom of the feet to give it a rubber grip. <laughs> Turn around and walk that way. <laughs> the tail goes back and forth. Whoa.